So I want to welcome you today. It's uh, Phil Fasano is here from Kaiser Permanente at the Library for the History of Human Imagination as part of our TEDMED conversations. Uh, Phil, welcome to TEDMED. Thanks very much. Really appreciate being here. So right off the bat, you know, Chief Technology Officer, Chief Information Officer, which is it? Chief Information Officer. So the Chief Information Officer, so you only have, what, five or 6,000 people working for you? That's about right. So five or 6,000 people in the technology function of a single organization in health. That's right. So for most people, that's unimaginable. Okay. <laughs> Do people stare at you at cocktail parties and go, how is that possible you have 5,000 people working for you and you're in a medical world? Sometimes. It's always an, an interesting uh, conversation about what we do. So everything I've heard you talking about, and it's certainly exciting, and, you know, ironically, it's like practically state of the art in the United States, right? Mm -hmm. As you sort of look at it and go, that's the state of the art. Congratulations. I often hear you, though, you're describing it within what I'm going to call a sick care context. You're describing it in, look, I'm engaging this system, which you call health care, and I sort of hear as well, every time they have a problem, they need to see this, they need to see that, we're going to make it better. And that's a bit like when my car is in the shop. I, mean, I really want better access with the, when my car is in the shop. But most of the time, I actually want to stay well. Well, in, in, to, in that context, uh, our organization, the way we approach health care, right. isn't about sick. Right. It, you know, we do deliver care when you're sick. Our whole goal is to focus on prevention. The tools we've put in place enable us to understand the challenges you're having based on any care gaps we see, because we run the analytics on the data we have right. to determine whether or not you've been taking your medicine or whether or not you've been exercising or watching your diet or if your blood sugar is, has increased since the last time we've seen you. And we proactively, for many members, send out text messages, you know, send them, get them on the phone and talk to them about those challenges so that they can be put right on the right course. Uh, rather than getting off course and being off course and showing up in our emergency department. So you have a real interest in doing that because in your system you own the full patient and their families or the full members as you pointed out. Mm -hmm. and so you're highly incented financially to keep them out of the emergency room, to keep them on their meds. Well, and you, that, that's an economic Even if incentive. you take the economics out of it, our whole system was founded on, on those principles. Right. Mm -hmm. So as a consequence, we focus on prevention. Even when we were back in basically serving Kaiser Industries right. uh, and they were building dams, the focus was on keeping the employees of Kaiser Industries healthy along with their families, <laughs> even in those very early days, 65 right. years ago. With the advent of all the technologies we now have at our disposal, we're able to do that in such an enhanced way by really being interactive with our, our members and our patients. And do your really members feel their, their, their life. any intrusiveness? Like, oh my God, they just got a text message. They clearly are keeping an eye on me. It's keep actually an opt-in system. Oh, okay. So it's their choice. Uh, and so they say, keep so an eye on me. Keep, it's keep exactly an eye on what me. they're doing. Would you do me a favor? Just keep an eye on me. I know I stray. I eat those box of Oreos all the time. No, I'm yeah. just okay. But it's, it, it's exactly what they're doing. That's the opportunity. And by the way, this is the first wave. Oh, yeah. you know, our, our view is that with the, with the clinical devices that are now being uh, created that are quite low cost and can be integrated with mobile ca capabilities, the sky's the limit on being able to monitor and help, help people manage their health and the challenges they might encounter every day. I've been saying for, I think, 25 years, and people used to be looking at me like I was nuts, that we are going to wear the Internet and health is going to be the driver. And the reason is we're going to embed it in our shirts and our undershirts because who wouldn't? <clears throat> because it will be able to detect problems long before we can detect them ourselves. This pace of inexpensive sensors with more sophistication, more capability for connection, this sensor technology is going to revolutionize remote care. No argument, right? I think it will absolutely revolutionize remote care. I think it will re revolutionize care. It, right. will, it will enhance health. It will change people's uh, ability to live longer uh, and, live, and be healthier uh, as a consequence of taking advantage of these, these advances in technology. It will also enable us to determine, without a doubt, how effective pharmaceuticals are. Right. Uh, because you'll be able to track uh, the, each case, the, each case right. and each and dose <laughs> and exactly uh, what's occurring in, the, in that individual situation. And probably those sensors are not going to be external. It won't be long before those sensors move to internal. 
we're often talking about a TED Med, the fact that all of your organs are going to have an IP address. The only question is whether every blood cell ends up with an IP, IP address. <laughs> okay? But when your liver has an IP address, it has an IP address. Mm -hmm. it, it has a presence on the network. I mean, it, you know, it sounds crazy, but there's no reason it can't have an IP address. I guess it's up to individual personal views of how far they want to go here. Yeah, uh, and at the I, same I think, time, the technology is probably going there and very, very soon. When you look at these readmission rate issues, do you, because of the kinds of technology support you do, see materially lower readmission rates among your members? I'll talk about uh, members of ours who uh, have diabetes, best example. Okay. We've effectively cut uh, their readmission rates by 50 percent as okay. a consequence of our information technology, the tools we have internally that tracks the, their conditions, as well as the constant reminders to stay on their meds, to, to watch their diet, to watch their, their weight, and so on. So 50 percent <clears throat> fewer 30-day readmissions are we talking here? or We're that? talking about effectively changing forever their readmission rate, rate for that population. And at the end of the day, what's your secret number? You know, do you think we're going to head to 70? Well, or I'll give you one other example. For heart patients in one of our regions, and this region has 3 million members, okay. we've reduced their mortality rate by over 70%. Mortality so, rate from a first from a from first, first heart attack from a first heart attack and event. for recurrent heart attacks as well, because we're uh, once they have a heart attack they become a, a very high level of risk, <laughs> and we track them very very actively. We've reduced mortality in that population below uh, any other uh, of our conditions. So now it's moved below being the number one cause of death for patients with heart conditions to uh, falling off and having another condition replace it as the number one cause of death in that region. So to the, we've proven for ourselves that, and for those patients, obviously, that if you have these tools and you monitor the patient in a very specific way, you're able to material, materially change outcomes. So as we go down the path of monitoring multiple conditions, we've improved substantially. The combinatorial effect should be very high. Against each one of, uh, each, each of the conditions we, we get focused on. People tend to think technology sort of has its limits because they view the technology as the change agent. But well, technology it, is the enabler of the change Some people agent. view technology as the end point. Yeah. It's really the person and their health goals as the end point with the technology not only enabling but supporting their goals and their, their desired approach to using that technology to get it information, to get it other people like them, to get it their social network, and to have that ver very conveniently available to them when they're about to fall off the wagon. Yeah. As opposed or when to they're struggling. Or when they're struggling. Just struggling. They I mean, need, we, we they all have our bad days. question answer or some support. Yeah. I mean, I think what's happened is if you look historically, you know, and here in the library, you know, history's pretty easy to look at, but there was a time where electricity was a really big deal. You know, society had no electricity, and this was this new technology, electricity, right? And people were putting it in their homes and their workplaces, and there were even lights on streets. What a concept, right? And so this electricity thing looked like it was going to become everywhere, and everybody was talking about this electricity technology. Now we sit here 100 years later, there's no technology of electricity. It's embedded in our world. We don't think about the technology of the power station and the light switch and the fuse box and, and all that. It's just, it disappears. And I think that's what's going to happen in so much of the technology of consumer health care. Mm -hmm. It's just going to disappear into the fabric. And we're going to be really talking about the benefits. Look, I have my small group. We're working on the diabetes together. I got another group that's caregivers where we're all caring for our moms, you know, mm -hmm. and, you know, all of us. And, and, and all of us are, are trying to figure out ways because our moms all live alone across town in a small apartment, and that's our group. And we all have moms who live across town in a small apartment, and we all help each other with tricks and things. Mm -hmm. I mean, people aren't imagining how technology can change the nature of what it means to be engaged as opposed to the mechanism. You know, when the technology melts into the fabric and is not something that's in your face, yeah. it effectively becomes just how you do it. Right, and I think even the word electronic health record, people will say, that's like the dial tone. What's mm -hmm. a dial tone? Well, right? I, it actually, I've actually been quoted as saying quite a lot that it's table stakes. Yeah. It's, the found, it's, a, it's like having a foundation in a house. You have to have it. Yeah. And then you build upon that to do everything else. Right, to not have a data infrastructure, and to not have an information infrastructure 
in your life, of, in, in the health of your life, that's going to seem crazy. And it's not going to be that your hospital has it or your insurer has it or your doctor has it. It's going to be, well, how could you not have it? Well, how could you not have it? And I think and if you look at the world today, most don't have it. Yeah. And even if they have it, it's an island. It's like having a file drawer. Right. It's not connected to an ecosystem of electronic health records, which makes it completely seamless. The phrase I've often used is, you know, electronic, having your medical record present when your doctor is treating you should be a right, not a privilege. Yeah. Unfortunately, right now, it's a privilege for a few. Right. And as the country adopts electronic health records and we have them widely used, they become part of the fabric. They're still not connected. The opportunity then becomes they have to be connected, just like electricity has to be everywhere has to be a commonplace activity. Yeah, I don't want to know what I'm the getting ability, my power. You go from doctor to doctor to doctor, each one needs to have your medical record or your health record, and they all should be able to get at it seamlessly as long as you give them permission. And that's just part of health, the health system. Then from there, you build on that. Everyone can take care of you at the best possible quality level because they know everything they need to know about your health history. Excellent, uh, Phil. I think, uh, you know, I want to thank you for joining us today. Uh, Phil, it's just been a real pleasure having you here at the Library for the History of Human Imagination and having you as part of the TED Med community and the Kaiser family. Uh, needless to say, uh, we learn so much from you and from your team, and uh, we're new in health and medicine, most of us in the TED Med team, so every day when we wake up, we learn about twice as much. Well, we so, want you to do that because so. we want you engaged in the, in the, uh, the health care industry. Well, thank you. We're, we're glad to be here, though some days I go, wow, Alice in Wonderland has nothing on health care in America. But as you've pointed out, we're just going to have to fix it. We will. Thank you. Thanks so much.